Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In a recent podcast, Aaron Stern showed us a cool effect for blending and bending time. And in that tutorial, he mentioned the echo effect. Now, he didn't spend time on it, but I'd like to, just because I see a particular question come up a lot in the forum. And that question is, when I have a layer moving around my composition and I want to add an echo trail, I can't seem to do it. Nothing happens. So if you select your layer and choose Effect, Time, Echo, as you can see, you don't get an echo, although your layer does seem to brighten up a bit. Not quite the effect you were going for, I gather. Now, I'll get to the answer in a moment, but first, I think it's really appropriate that this is a lesson related to time because it gives me the opportunity to take a moment and talk about time. You may have noticed that the After Effects podcast has added some contributors, most recently Maltanen, a.k.a. Jersey Drozda, and Iran Stern, a.k.a. Iran Stern. That's what he goes by. Now, there are a few reasons we've expanded the podcast team to include these fine gentlemen. First, they do great stuff. If you've not come to Creative Cow and watched their tutorials, you're missing out. I've learned a lot from watching their stuff, and I know that you will too. Another reason is that watching their stuff inspires me. In this case, I hadn't thought of doing this tutorial until I saw Iran, so there you go. But the other reason is that, well, I've been working on a long-term project that's going to take up a lot of my time in the coming months. You know what? It'll be easier if I show you. This is my son, or possibly daughter, unknown at this time. And apparently, preparing for kids takes time. And also, I'm told they take even more time once they're born. So rather than just doing the After Effects podcast when I have time to get them done, I've enlisted the help of some of our After Effects aces, and I hope that in light of the situation, you'll forgive me for not being here every single week. Hey, unless you're planning on coming over here and helping me change diapers, I don't want to hear any complaints. Okay, back to the lesson. The answer to this question is simple, but you have to understand how the echo effect works and what it does. The echo effect blends frames from different times in your footage. It does not look at the motion of a layer to create the echo, but rather it looks at a layer and sees how the pixels have changed from frame to frame. So if you animate the position of a layer that has echo time, the only change that you'll see is the echo created by the pixels changing within the footage. The motion will be ignored. And that means that you can't add echo trails to a layer's motion. Or can you? Well, actually you can. And you can do it by using our old friends, nesting and precomposing. If you aren't clear on nesting and precomposing, check out the two-part tutorial podcast on that very subject. In short, though, precomposing is taking a layer or layers and putting them in a separate composition and then placing or nesting that composition into another composition. So in this case, in the project panel, I'll take the precomposition with our animation and I'll place it into the main composition and then with the nested composition selected I'll choose Effect Time Echo. As you can see we're now getting an echo. Maybe not quite what you want but it's there. Let's make some adjustments. In the effects panel I'll set the number of echoes up to 15 which will add the number of echoes to the effect. As you can see this creates a very bright effect that's hard to make sense of because by default, the echo effect uses the add transfer mode to mix the echoes together. So to change that, in the effects panel, go down to the echo operator's property pulldown and set it to composite in front. As you can see, this composites each new echo behind an already existing instance of the layer. Take some time to look at the results of some of the other echo operator modes. You can create some bizarre and cool effects this way. One more thing, back in the effects panel, I'll set the value for the decay property down to 0.8. By doing this, I'm setting the effect to make each echo 80% as opaque as the echo that precedes it. So the first echo would have an opacity of 80%, and the next echo would have an opacity of 80% of 80%, which is actually a value of 64%, and so on and so on. As you can see, this creates a nice fading echo over time. Now, one property I didn't touch was the echo time property. This property determines the time in seconds between echoes. Negative values create echoes from previous frames, and positive values create echoes from upcoming frames. Again, playing around, you can get some bizarre effects. One thing that I should mention is that with regard to text, at least in After Effects CS3, you don't need to precompose the animation to get the echo. 
I think it may have something to do with the fact that all text is continuously rasterized, but I'm just guessing. And that seems to hold true for any layer that has an available collapse transformation switch. If you turn it on, it usually seems to do the job. In any case, you can skip the nesting and pre-composing steps for your text animation and just apply the echo effect directly. I actually didn't know that until I started writing this tutorial and did some testing. And if you play your cards right, by increasing the number of echoes and playing with the echo time property, you can get that nice retro logo look that we loved back in the 80s. All right, have fun, righteous dudes. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.